Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to watch this video put together by Guam Citizens for Public Accountability. I'm the spokesperson, Ken Leon Guerrero. I'm here today to tell you a story. The story begins when we look at the fact that two years ago, our senators gave themselves a massive pay raise in secret, making them the third highest paid senators in the United States right after California, Pennsylvania, and just ahead of New York. So we're in good company. But when you consider those states, those populations, and those budgets, and then you look back at Guam, you have to ask yourself, are our senators worth the $318,750 that they will have paid themselves by the end of the 33rd legislature? So. We have to go back to the beginning. The reason I bring this up is on June 30th, President Obama signed the PROMISA bill, which is a bill to take over financial management of the island of Puerto Rico, the government of the island of Puerto Rico. The reason that we're taking, the federal government is taking over the island's finances is because Puerto Rico basically went off the financial cliff. And July 1st, here's a picture of the governor of Puerto Rico announcing to uh, bondholders during a conference that he has just signed an executive order uh, preventing payment of further debts and obligations of the government of Puerto Rico until the federal management, federal financial management team has time to come in and assess the situation. Here's Governor Calvo, who on August 5th, issued a press release congratulating his financial management team on the wonderful job they did refinancing a little over $200 million of Guam bonds, saving taxpayers $17 million, which would have been a good thing if that's where the story ended, but it doesn't. In addition to refinancing over $200 million of bonds, getting a lower interest rate, saving taxpayers money, all good things, they added $45 million more in bond debt. So for the next 31 years, taxpayers on Guam are going to pay $80 million to pay back that $45 million we borrowed to pay the bills of Guam Memorial Hospital. So we basically made a long-term commitment to solve a short-term problem. That's right out of the playbook of the Puerto Rico legislature. So since the Guam legislature is in charge of our money, let's look at what the Puerto Rico legislature did that drove them over the financial cliff. Here's an article from the New York Times. The Puerto Rico debt crisis is explained. For years, Puerto Rico borrowed money using municipal bonds, using the funds to compensate for declining government revenue and to prevent cuts in services and layoffs of public employees and it easily found investors. That's what we heard from the governor. When they refinanced that $235 million in bonds and added $45 million in new debt, they found investors. But let's go back to 2014. 2014 was where Puerto Rico began declaring a financial emergency. At the time Puerto Rico declared that financial emergency, their per person debt was $10,656 for every man, woman, and child on Puerto Rico. At the same time, the per person debt here on Guam was $9,051. We were just $1,605 behind Puerto Rico. And our picture isn't getting any better, and here's why. In budget hearings before the legislature, we learned that government of Guam is nearly $120 million in deficit. In other words, for 2014, the government spent $60 million more than it collected. In 2015, the government spent $59 million more than it collected, raising our total operational deficit for government of Guam to $119 million. And that's a bad enough story, and I wish I could say that was the end of the story, but this is 2016, and so far in 2016, we have an operational deficit 
of $16,700,000. And we still have a couple of more months to go. So we don't know where that number is going to end up. So as we sit here today, we're looking at a deficit somewhere between 136 and 140 million or maybe more. That deficit adds $853 to the debt load for every man, woman, and child on Guam. That's bad because now what we see is just with our deficits, we have gone from $9,051 at the beginning of 2014 to a current level of $9,900. We're just a little, just a little under where Puerto Rico was. We're about seven, eight hundred dollars under where Puerto Rico declared a financial emergency. And if this was the end of the story, whew, we made it. But <laughs> it's not. In those budget hearings, we've also learned that government of Guam still owes seven hundred I mean seventy million dollars, seventy million dollars in tax refunds. Well, those tax refunds are adding $440 to the per person debt for our island's people. So now when we add the tax refunds to the total, we go from 9,051 9, in 2014 to 10,344, just a couple of hundred dollars underneath the level where Puerto Rico declared a financial emergency. But there's more. Recently, we've learned that a defunct company that owed government of Guam hundreds of thousands of dollars and had lost its lease sued the government and somehow three people who are not accountable, were not elected, not appointed, and have no fiduciary responsibilities for the people of Guam decided that company deserved $14 million. And what's really upsetting beyond that award is the fact that in an era of two to three percent bank interest rate, they awarded this company a 10 percent interest rate. Well, that brings the debt load to the citizens of Guam up to $101. So when we add that to the mix, we now are at $10,445. We're just $220, $221 under the level Puerto Rico declared a financial emergency. And we still have a few months, and I wish this story ended here, but it doesn't because we just recently passed, the le legislature just recently passed Bill 340. They borrowed $45 million to pay short-term obligations for the hospital. This is the second time they have borrowed money to pay Guam Memorial's bills. So rather than do the hard work to solve the problems, they're their first instinct is to borrow and spend. Well, that first instinct has just added $434 to the debt burden of every man, woman, and child here on Guam. So now we've exceeded the level. We're $200 higher than Puerto Rico was when they declared a financial emergency. Whew, if only the story stopped here, <laughs> but it doesn't because we've just recently learned that the tax credit lease for Tijan somehow turned into a quarter of a billion dollar purchase by the taxpayers of Guam. So your share of that quarter billion dollars is 1,572. So when we add that to our current debt, taxpayers on Guam are now carrying a debt burden per person of $12,451. Unfortunately, we have seen our per person debt increase in just two years by $3,400 or 38%. Now, if that's where the story ended, that would be a bad story, but unfortunately, that's not where the story ends because before the legislature right now is Bill 338. With Bill 338, the governor wants to turn Guam Memorial Hospital into a center of medical excellence to the tune of about 140 to $175 million. Your share of that dream is $1,100. And they're, uh, Tony Atta, Rory Respicio, and 
Dennis Rodriguez are fighting hard to get that bill pulled out of Mike, Senator Mike and Nicholas's committee because he has told the public he is not going to hold hearings on that bill. He's going to hold on to it as long as he can to protect the public purse. And that is a good thing. But unfortunately, Rory Respicio changed the rules so that they could get bills out of Mike and Nicholas's committee so that they could pass them and uh, get the, make people happy. <laughs> they passed a lot of bills on pay raises and stuff that they pulled out of Mike and Nicholas's committee. They pulled Bill 340 out, and now they're going to try to pull Bill 338 out. That is going to add $1,100 to your debt, my debt. Everybody you know on Guam is going to have their debt level go up by $1,100. So we're going to go from 12 1,451 to 13,551, a 50% debt increase during the 33rd legislature. So it's kind of insane when you think about it that uh, Puerto Rico declared a financial emergency when their per person debt level hit 10,656. What has happened in Puerto Rico since they declared that emergency? Well, they've laid off 30,000 government employees. The poverty level has hit 45%. Here on Guam, based on government statistics, our poverty level is at 36%. So we're not very far behind Puerto Rico. In order to fund government operations, they had to close down 150 schools to free up the cash to fund other areas of the government. The health care system is collapsing as between 6 and 30 medical professionals a day leave the island seeking employment elsewhere. And in 2014, 30% of the government revenue was going to debt service. And based on a report by the public auditor here on Guam, we're somewhere between 11 and 13% of government revenues going to debt service. But remember, that doesn't include the... Uh, refunds, the operating deficit, uh, Bill, I mean, Guam YTK, or Bill 338, or the uh, Tijin purchase. So I expect to see her revise that number up rather higher, and especially if Bill 338 passes. So in Puerto Rico, they've suspended tax refunds indefinitely. And over the last several years, more than 344,000 residents have left the island for the U.S. because the economy is collapsing. It's stagnating and collapsing, and people are leaving the island to find work. Which brings us back to the original $85,000 justifi justification our senators told us. They told us that if we paid them $85,000 a year, we would see better government. So how's that working? Well, we already know that we're in a deficit situation, that the government has spent about 130 to 140 million more than it has collected. And now we're looking at all the department heads submitting their budget requests for 2017. Department of Education wants 94 million more for 2017 than they got in 2016. Guam Memorial Hospital wants $45 million more on top of the $45 million they just received through the bond. Department of Public Health and Social Services wants $8 million more. The Guam Police Department wants $5 million more. The Guam Visitors Bureau wants $4.8 million more. And the Department of Revenue and Taxation wants $2.4 million more. Judiciary wants $2 million more. Department of Public Works wants 1.6 million more. The Department of Administration wants 1.5 million more. And the Guam Election Commission wants 1.5 million more. The Mayor's Council of Guam would like 1 million more. And the Department of Labor would like 400,000 more. When you add all these additional budget requests, additional budget requests together, that comes up to a total of 167,200,000 more for 27 than they were budgeted for 2016. So in 2017, they want 167,200,000 more than, we gave, than they budgeted for in 2016. 
And that's a problem. Because if we didn't collect enough money in 2014, 2015, and 2016 to meet the budget, where are we going to get $167 million more for the 2017 budget plus $140 million to pay off the 14, 15, and 16 deficits? Well, the administration would have you believe they're going to step up their tax collections and collect $160 million that they've identified as uncollected taxes. They've identified $62 million in business privilege tax, $36.6 million in corporate tax, $38.3 million in personal tax. And I have a problem with this because I don't have any faith they're going to be able to do that when you consider the fact that the governor's office stepped in and cut a secret deal with Dennis Rodriguez Sr. to reduce his taxes and penalties to the level the AG's office pulled out. They didn't want to have anything to do with it because they didn't believe it was in the best interest of taxpayers to reduce the deficit, I mean the tax and penalties and interest that much. We don't know how much was reduced because it's still secret. And the government of Guam can, you know, they gave a contract to a guy who was convicted of dodging taxes. So here we have a guy who's being paid with tax funds, convicted of not paying his taxes, yet we continue to pay, give him money every single month. And then there's the fact that the U.S. Inspector General identified that government of Guam failed to collect $414,000 in privilege taxes from contractors on the defense, on the military buildup because they don't have procedures in place. So in view of those facts, I have a very low expectation on their ability to collect $160 million more. So that brings us back to the per person debt level here on Guam of $12,451. The only way we're going to be able to reduce that deficit and pay the tax refunds and pay for the center of excellence, pay for the deficit, is to issue more bonds. So what we're looking at here now is coming before the legislature very soon I expect to see a series of bills requesting authority to issue bonds, which brings us back to the very definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. The senators increased their compensation over the last couple of years from by 54.5%. Our per person debt level over the, the 33rd legislature has gone up 38% so far, and if Bill 338 passes, it'll go up by 50%. That is the definition of insanity. And in order to stop the, insan the insanity, we have to take a careful look at who we vote for this election. Earlier, you've heard me talk about the Gang of Six, the six senators who fought so hard to keep their pay raises that they defeated every opportunity to roll the pay raises back. Tommy Morrison, Grant McCready, Tina Munya Barnes, Tony Atta, Dennis Rodriguez, and Frank Bloss. But we've raised the gang of six to a gang of seven because of the work Roy Respicio has done to pull bills out of Mike St. Nicholas's committee so that we can raise the level of debt that Mike, uh, Mike St. Nicholas objects to. So this primary, we have an opportunity to dramatically change the future of Guam for the better. When we vote out those senators who are borrow and spend addicts and put senators in place who are more concerned about the financial security of the people than they are about the financial security of the senators and their special interest groups, then we're going to be, re then we'll return control of the legislature, the people's house, back to the people. Prior to the primary election, we will be making recommendations on how to vote to ensure that that happens, how we can uh, return control of the legislature to the people. And so I encourage you to share this video with your friends, family, and coworkers because educated voters are 
smart voters, and we need smart voters to make sure that we get control of our legislature. For more information, you can go to our website at guamc4pa.org, or you can look at our postings on Facebook at guamc4pa, or you can go to our YouTube channel, Guam Citizens for Public Accountability, and look at the videos there. Share the videos and save our island from following Puerto Rico over the financial cliff. Thank you.